welcome to TOS TV, your digital first pan African network. I am Uche Naoka and this is Africa Now. Algerian President Abdul Majid Tabaun has dissolved the parliament and called for an early legislative election. Tabaun gave the announcement as Algeria was commemorating National Mater Day on Thursday. The dissolution came after a series of meetings between the president and heads of parties, including Belaid and Abdekader Bengrina, head of the National Beauty Movement, and former minister and candidate in the presidential election, which Tabaun won. People's National Assembly is expected to dissolve in the coming days. Pressure has been mounting on the government to resign in recent weeks. As several thousand Algerians rallied in a northern town Tuesday against the military and current president. Abdul Majid Tabaun in the rally in Kerata. Still on the live television broadcast, the Algerian President Tabaun also announced an amnesty for dozens of jailed activists of the Hirak protest movement, which swept former strongman Abdelaziz Bouteflika from power in 2019. The president said he decided to grant presidential pardon to about 30 people for whom a decision had been given and others for whom no verdict had been reached, adding that between 55 and 60 people will be joining their families from this evening or tomorrow. Taban, who has previously expressed dissatisfaction with the cabinet of Prime Minister Abdulaziz Gerard, made the announcement as the North African nation's government faces multiple challenges, government political and economic crisis compounded by the unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic. Away from Algeria, Somali security forces have closed most roads in the capital, Mogadishu, ahead of planned anti-government protests. Special forces have also been deployed on roads leading to Jika Dasun Monument, the venue of the protest. Opposition parties want President Mohamed Abdullahi from Majo to leave office after his term expired last week. Meanwhile, the government says militia men allied to the opposition on Thursday night attacked army positions in Mogadishu at a hotel close to the presidential palace. The opposition says two former presidents were staying at the hotel when it came under attack by security forces. In a short statement, the security minister said the attack had been repelled. President Fomajo is expected to hold a meeting with Somalia's five regional presidents as part of efforts to end the deadlock. The Ethiopian government has accused Sudan of provoking a conflict between the two countries which have seen a rise in tension due to a border dispute. Clashes erupted late last year over an area of fertile land settled by Ethiopian farmers that Sudan says lies in its territory. Both sides have accused each other of acts of aggression. In a strongly worded statement, Ethiopia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs accused what it called the military wing of the Sudanese government of escalating tensions and pushing the two countries into a war. The Ethiopian statement said the Sudanese army was fueling the crisis to serve the interests of a third party. This is your digital first pan African network, TOS TV network. You are watching Africa Now. More stories from the African continent after the break to stay with us. Welcome back. You are watching Africa Now. We continue with development in COVID-19 on the African continent. Africa's reported COVID-19 debt toll surpassed 100,000 on Friday, a fraction of those reported on other continents, but rising fast as a second wave of infections overwhelms hospitals. However, debt are rising sharply across Africa, driven by its southern region, especially economic powerhouse South Africa, which accounts for nearly half. South Africa was ravaged by a second wave caused by a more contagious variant that has jammed up casualty wards. Richard Mihigo, coordinator of the communization programs at the World Health Organization 
Africa office said the rise in debt was pronounced in countries near South Africa like Zimbabwe, Mozambique and Malawi, raising the possibility that the 501Y.2 variant identified in South Africa late last year had spread through the South African region, although more genomic sequencing needs to be carried out to prove that. French President Emmanuel Macron has described the slow speed of COVID-19 vaccination campaigns in Africa as intolerable, blaming inequality between poor and rich countries for access to vaccines. During a video conference on Wednesday with Egypt's President Abdul Fattah al-Sisi, Senegal's President Macky Sall, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa, Congolese President President Felix Tshisekedi, and Comoros President Azali Asalmani, Macron said the country must respond to this outrageous inequality. France's leader highlighted a bottleneck in vaccine production and distribution of supplies. He said production capacities in Africa needed to be increased, while transparency in vaccine pricing was needed, pointing how some Western countries could buy vaccine more cheaply than African countries. President Macron said he was in favor of giving the World Health Organization and World Trade Organization a common mandate to work on removing barriers for accessing supplies of vaccine. He added that global access to coronavirus, corona vaccines rather, would prove to be a very good test of a new multilateralism. Eswatini has extended a partial lockdown imposed to prevent the spread of coronavirus for another two weeks. Acting Prime Minister Themba Masuku said the restrictions will remain in place as the government plans to roll out vaccination. He said a decline in virus cases had been recorded during the time the country was in partial lockdown. The country has recorded 16,709 confirmed cases of the virus, including 640 deaths. Away from matters of COVID-19, the dismantling of the 7,500-ton stern of the Japanese vessel that caused a huge oil spill in Mauritius in July is underway with plans to recycle its parts. The Japanese ball carrier ran aground on the reefs of Pointed Esne on 25th of July 2020, carrying nearly 4,000 tons of oil and causing an ecological disaster. It later broke into two and the bow was cuttled with the, while the stern remained on the coral reefs. After the bow was sunk in high seas, at least 17 dead dolphins were found on the coast of the Indian Ocean nation. It is estimated that the dismantling of the wreck of the MV Wakashio would take between 25 and 30 days. Three tugs and a Chinese badge have been deployed for the operation. Trucks have been mobilized to transport the part of the ship that will be cut up and sent for recycling. This is your digital force by African network, TOS TV network. You are watching Africa Now. Still ahead, business and sports. Thanks for staying tuned. In business, the World Bank on Thursday announced its elected former Senegal Prime Minister Finance Minister Makato Diop to lead the agency responsible for private sector finance at a critical time for the global recovery. He would be the first African to lead the International Finance Corporation, IFC, which leverages financing to support private firms in developing nations. Noting his deep development and finance experience, World Bank President David Malpa said Diop's skill at I. FC will help the World Bank Group continue their rapid response to the global crisis and help build a green, resilient, inclusive recovery. The Washington-based development lender said Diop's key responsibilities will be to dip in and energize what it called the IFC's 3.0 strategy to mobilize private capital, increase climate and gender investment, and support countries facing conflict. According to World Bank, it also claims to expand IFC's impact in the poorest and most fragile countries with a goal to more than triple IFC's annual own account investments. Diop will take his new post at the IFC on March 1st.
And in sports, the 2020-2021 Toto Cup Confederation Cup group stage draw will be conducted on Monday the 22nd in Cairo, Egypt. The draw will be conducted at 1300 GMT, 1500 Cairo local time by head of competitions Khalid Nassar. The first leg of the additional second preliminary round took place in February 13 and 14. The return leg is scheduled for this weekend. The aggregate winners from the last leg of preliminaries will qualify for the group stages. Apart from title holders Morocco, who have already qualified for the group stage, there are 15 places to fill to complete the team quarter for the four groups of four teams. And that is Africa Now on your digital first pan African Net news network, TOS TV. For more updates, do visit our website at www.tostvnetwork.com. Do also follow and like TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. Do stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS TV Network. I am Uche Naoka. Bye for now.